So in the last video, we talked about the conservation of momentum. Conservation of momentum. Conservation of momentum. And we said that if there's this quantity called momentum that we that we give the letter P and it's equal to the mass of an object mass of an object times its velocity. Right? And if we want we haven't really been careful about calling it a vector, but there but these are vectors. And we said that this quantity here can't change in any system. And, and in any system, that includes the universe. So the total amount of this, total amount, the total amount of this can never change. Total amount can't change. So in this video, we're going to talk about another quantity that's also conserved, and that quantity is called energy. Energy. Energy is also conserved. Now we haven't actually said what energy is yet, but but this principle that energy is conserved is actually something that you're probably already familiar with. Even if you might not know the definitions and you might not know it mathematically, you still have an intuition for the fact that energy is always conserved. So to show that, let's think of an example. Say we have these two hills right next to each other. and I'm standing here on this hill. Here I am. And I roll a ball down the hill. Right? My ball is this pink color, and I roll a ball down the hill. There it goes. And we can ask the question how high will the ball reach on the other side of the hill, right? This ball is going to roll down the hill and roll up the next hill. And, and end up somewhere. So where will it end up? Well, the simplest thing we might say is that the ball will reach the same height as, as the height where I let it go. So the ball might reach right here. That's a reasonable guess about what might happen. Another reasonable guess might be that you know the ball won't quite make it up, right? It'll it'll roll down, and and while it's moving along, it'll bump into some things and lose something, and then. Because of the bumps into things, it won't quite make it as high. And that's a reasonable answer. It's probably even better than the answer that the ball will end up right here. But now these two, two guesses seem to be reasonable. So what's another guess we could have? We could guess that the ball will end up all the way up here. So your intuition might tell you that that doesn't really make too much sense, right? It shouldn't, it shouldn't go higher if I just let it go without throwing it or anything because if it if it could go higher and then when it rolls back it would probably go even higher so it might reach it might reach this height on its way back and then and then it could roll back again and it would eventually just escape escape our hills or fly away and I mean, we already know that won't happen we don't need to do any calculations or make any careful definitions to know that there's something wrong with that picture and the reason things like this don't happen in nature is because of the conservation of energy. Now let's try to talk about what energy is. What the heck is it? That's actually a pretty difficult question to answer, and actually it, it might be impossible to answer. But it turns out that there's this quantity that every time we calculate it, it comes out to be the same. And I'll, I'll write down the units here. It's a mass times... Uh, length squared divided by time squared. And you could have different units, right? These could be seconds and meters and kilograms, or they could be whatever. But these are the units. And there's a, a quantity with these units that every time we calculate it, it, it ends up being the same before and after. So let's talk through this example again, slightly differently, using the word energy, and kind of keeping track of where the energy is. So right here we have... You know, I let go of the ball. The ball is not moving right away, right the instant I let it go. But it has some energy because of its because of its height. So it has energy from from being up high. 
energy from height. Right, and we're not being very, very precise or, or really making any calculations, but, but just so you see it, I'll write down the formula. It's, it's mass times the strength of gravity, um, which has units of acceleration, times the height. So if you check this, it ends up having the same units as, as this over here. So anytime you calculate energy, it needs to have these units. But anyway, the important thing is that it has energy from just from being up high, just from its position. And now when the ball rolls down here, right, when it's at the bottom, it's actually moving along at a pretty good speed. So here it's not as high, its, it's height is lower. It has less energy from its height, but now it has energy because of its motion. So energy from motion. Right, it has less energy from the height, so it lost energy there, but it gained energy in its motion. Energy from motion. And I guess I guess I should include these words. So energy from the position of an object is called the potential energy. That's one way of saying it. This term potential energy. That's what this is. And this, this specifically is from gravity, and there are other types of potential energy. But energy from the position is called potential energy, and energy from motion is called, called kinetic energy. But the terms, the terms don't really matter. The terms are just there to talk about these concepts that there's, it's possible to have energy from the position and also energy from the motion. And the expression for kinetic energy of a particle is one half times the mass times the velocity squared. So you'll notice again that that these these units are preserved: the the mass length squared divided by time squared. It still has these units. And now, when the ball rolls back up the hill, you know, wherever it ends up. It goes upward, so it gains energy from height, but then it loses some of its energy from its motion. So say it ended up here, it would end up having the same amount of energy. The ball has the same energy as before. Right? Because it, it, it stopped moving up here, and it's at the same height, so it has the same potential energy and no kinetic energy. B4 has an E at the end. But we said that we think that a more realistic picture is that the ball doesn't quite reach as high. Right? So if the ball starts with this potential energy, changes some of that energy into kinetic energy, and then ends up losing all of its kinetic energy before it gains as much, before it gains back all of its potential energy, what happened to the energy? Did we did we lose energy? Is there less energy? So if we're going to claim that energy is conserved and we can't create or destroy energy no matter what, we must be able to find this energy somewhere, this energy that the ball is missing. So one possibility in this case could be that, that there are little blades of grass here and as the ball rolls by it bumps into the blades of grass and then when it bumps into the blades of grass it actually slows down a little bit so it loses energy and it actually gives that energy to the grass. So when the ball when the ball is done rolling, we see that there's this difference in energy here, right? We could figure out what the difference is in energy between where it would have rolled if it retained all of the energy in the ball and where it actually ended up. And we know that that much energy went somewhere else. And in this case, we can find that energy if we look in the grass. So it's wiggling around or maybe it's heat. But it's in some form.